Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to our today's class. It's our fourth lesson on the fifth topic of Form 3 work, which is called Current Electricity 2. As usual, let me comment by giving the quote of the day, which states that everything will come to you at the right time. You just have to be patient and stay focused. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at resistors. Let's start by defining what we mean by the term a resistor. So resistors are simply materials which are designed to offer some resistance to the flow of electric current. So resistors are usually made from different materials. For example, we have the metal alloys, we have resistor wires and also carbon. Then the variation of resistance with temperature for different materials is as shown in these particular graphs. So one you can see here that a material which is called a tungsten, its resistance usually varies directly proportional with temperature. So this one simply means as the temperature increases, the resistance of tungsten material also increases. Then um, the second material is what we call a thermistor. A thermistor is just an example of a semiconductor. Remember semiconductors, these are just materials whose electrical conductance uh, lies between the conductance of uh, insulators and that of good conductors. Later on in electronics, we shall see that we have basically two types of uh, semiconductors, what we call intrinsic semiconductors and extrinsic semiconductors. Under intrinsic semiconductors, we shall see that these are just pure semiconductors whose electrical resistance is enhanced by temperature alone. They are usually insulators at room temperature. So a thermistor is a good example of an intrinsic semiconductor. Then the other material is what we call a tungsten, uh, which is usually an alloy. So for tungsten, temperature does not affect its resistance. So you can see as the temperature increases, the resistance of tungsten materials, which is an alloy, remains constant. Then we have basically uh, three types of resistors. One is what we call the fixed resistors. These are resistors which are designed to give a fixed amount of resistance. That is, for example, if it is designed to give only 20 ohm resistance, that is the only uh, amount of resistance that it can offer. So those ones, we call them fixed resistors. So resistors that are designed to give only a fixed or a specific amount of resistance, but that resistance cannot be varied. Examples of um, fixed resistor, one we have a wire wound resistor, which offers a fixed amount of resistance. For example, it could be maybe a 30 ohm resistor. The other type of fixed resistor is what we call the carbon resistors, which are usually common in radios. So for the carbon resistors, this is um, how they look like. Then in an electrical circuit, the symbol that we use to denote a fixed resistor is this particular symbol here. The other type of resistor is what we call variable resistors. So these are resistors which are designed to offer a varied range of resistance. That is the amount of resistance that they offer can be varied. Maybe they can be set to offer 10 ohm resistance. They can also be set to offer maybe 20 ohm resistance. They can also be set to offer 30 ohm resistance and so on and so forth. So for the variable resistors, this one, they can offer a varied or different amount of resistance depending on the setting. So an example of variable resistor, one we have a rheostat, which is usually used in volume control knobs on radio. So that is, you can be asked to give an application of a rheostat. So it is used in volume control knobs of radios in an electrical circuit these are the symbols that we use uh, to denote a real start either the first symbol or the second symbol a variable resistor is what we call a potentiometer which is simply uh, it is a three terminal variable resistor so you can see it has one terminal the second and the third terminal but in most cases for the first type of resistor that that is uh, the first type of variable resistor that we looked at, it only had, that is a real start, usually has only two terminals, but a three terminal variable resistor, we call it a potentiometer. So its application is that it is used as balance controls in audio amplifier. So if you're asked to give an application of a potentiometer, you simply say that it is used as balance controls in audio amplifiers. Then its 
uh, circuit simple is as shown by this diagram. The third and last type of resistor is what we call, or type of resistor is what we call nonlinear resistor. So as the word suggests, nonlinear simply means that their resistance is not directly proportional to current. That is, it is not linear or it is not uh, in a straight line. So nonlinear resistors, the, in this type of resistors, the current flowing through these resistors does not change linearly or in a straight line with change in uh, applied voltage. So that means if you plot a graph of voltage against current or if you plot a graph of current against voltage for an nonlinear resistor, you will not obtain a straight line graph. Maybe you can obtain a curve, but you won't obtain a straight line graph because the resistance of nonlinear resistors does not vary directly or in a linearly manner with change in voltage. So we have basically two examples of nonlinear resistors. One is what we call a thermistor. A thermistor is just a temperature dependent resistor. Yeah, as we explained from our graph, a thermistor is an example of a semiconductor. So, and the thermistor in this case uh, strictly lies under the type of semiconductor, which is called intrinsic semiconductors. So we have said that intrinsic semiconductors, as we shall see in uh, the second last topic of form 4 which is called electronics we shall see that we have basically two types of uh, semiconductors that is the intrinsic and the extrinsic semiconductors and we are saying that a thermistor falls under intrinsic semiconductors and you have said that intrinsic semiconductors these are uh, pure semiconductors whose electrical resistance is enhanced by temperature alone that is at room temperature a thermistor uh, that is at room temperature they are insulators, but when you heat them or when you increase their temperature, that is when they become conductors. So it is a temperature dependent resistor. So when the temperature is room or when the temperature is low, they are insulators, but when you increase their temperatures, they become, uh, that is, they become conductors. Examples of semiconductors, that is intrinsic semiconductors, apart from the thermistors, we have what we call silicon and also germanium but we shall discuss more uh, in electronics which is the second last topic in form for work so thermistor its resistance decreases uh, that is its re resistance decreases with uh, the increase in temperature remember if resistance is decreasing it means that conductance is increasing so we can say that for a thermistor or for um, intrinsic semiconductors for example a thermistor germanium and also silicon resistance decreases with increase in temperature. So this means that conductance increases with increase in temperature. That is, when you heat them or when you increase their temperature, the ability to conduct becomes very high. And remember, when conductance is high, that means resistance is very, very low. That is to the flow of charges. So we are simply saying that resistance is usually inversely proportional to conductance of a material. Then the second type of nonlinear resistor is what we call a light dependent resistor denoted as the LDR. So the resistance of an LDR, that is light dependent resistor, it decreases when it receives light of increasing uh, intensity. So these are just resistors which are dependent on light. So their resistance uh, decreases when it receives light of increasing intensity. So which means that... Uh, when there is no light, their resistance actually becomes, that is resistance decreases with when it receives light. So when there is no light, resistance is very high. But when uh, it receives light, their resistance now reduces so that they can conduct uh, electricity or charges. Then LDR is used or its application, it is used in light operated switching systems. Then in an electrical circuit, this is the symbol for a light dependent resistor then next we look at measurement of resistance basically we have three methods of measuring resistance one is what we call the voltmeter ammeter method as we discuss under the experiment involving the ohm's law you simply set the apparatus as shown in this particular diagram this is our variable resistor uh, and specifically this is a rheostat we have an ammeter uh, source of uh, charge for example it can be a battery or some cells which are connected uh, in parallel we have a switch we have a voltmeter then we have a fixed 
resistor uh, denoted by R. So in this experiment, you just by adjusting the variable resistor with switch closed, you tabulate the values of V and I, then you use those values to plot a graph of voltage against current. Of course, if um, the material is ohmic, we expect a straight line graph whose gradient gives the resistance. So you can find the you can measure the resistance of a conductor by carrying out this experiment whereby you using the variable resistor you just set different amounts of current and voltage then you tabulate the values of voltage and current then you plot a graph of voltage against current so you'll obtain a straight line graph so the gradient of that particular graph of voltage against current will give you the resistance of the material used that we can use to measure resistance is uh, by use of the Wiston uh, bridge method. So this is our Wiston bridge method. We usually have a galvanometer uh, in between it. Remember a galvanometer usually has a pointer which has the positive and the negative side. So uh, you set the apparatus as shown here. This is our resistor K, this is resistor L, resistor N and fixed resistor M. Then of course we have our source of voltage. So when the Wiston bridge is at balance, so the Wiston bridge is said to be at balance if the galvanometer uh, pointer, uh, it, if the galvanometer points zero or when there is no deflection in the pointer of the galvanometer. That is when we say that the Wiston bridge is at balance. So when the Wiston bridge is at balance, that is when no current flows through the galvanometer, hence there is no deflection on the galvanometer. So at that particular point, when the galvanometer pointer uh, reads zero, then if you take the fixed the resistance of resistor K multiplied by resistance of resistor N, that should be able to give you resistance of resistor N multiplied by resistance of resistor M. So at balance or when the deflection is zero, resistance KN must be equal to the resistance of resistor L times M. For example, if uh, assuming the resistance of K was 10 ohm, then that of uh, L was uh, 40 ohm and that of N was 20 ohm, we can use these three to compute the resistance of M that is provided the galvanometer pointer is reading zero or when there is no deflection on the galvanometer. So we just take the resistance of K that is 10 times 20 must be equal to 40 times the resistance of M. So 10 times 20 that will give you 200 must be equal to 40 times M. So if you take Kn is equal to Ln. If we make M subject of the formula, you'll just have 10 times 20 divided by 40, which gives you 5 ohm. So the resistance of M is actually 5 ohm. So K times N must be equal to L times M. Then the last method is what we call the meter bridge method, whereby you arrange the apparatus as shown here. This is a galvanometer. This is a fixed resistor K. This is a fixed resistor L. Then we have... Um, nichrome wire or we have a wire with a nichrome wire which is um, mounted on a meter rule so this is our meter rule here then this is our nichrome wire the one in red so then we have a, our galvanometer connected to a jockey so you just move the jockey along uh, that is along the wire or the nichrome wire ac until the galvanometer records zero or until there is no deflection in the galvanometer so you just adjust the position of B until there is no deflection on the galvanometer. So that is when the meter bridge is actually at balance. So the meter bridge and also the Wiston bridge becomes at balance when the galvanometer pointer reads zero or when there is no deflection in the galvanometer. At that point, if you take the resistance of K times the resistance of B, C or the resistance N, that must be equal to the resistance of L multiplied by by the resistance of the resistor wire from point A up to point B. So at balance, K times N, so K times N must be equal to the resistance of uh, the resistance of BC. That is, if you take KN, that is KN, the resistance of K multiplied by uh, N, which is simply the BC, it should be able to give you the resistance of L multiplied by the resistance of M. So remember, BC in this case, BC in this case represents, uh, we are representing BC by letter N and we are representing AB by letter M. So if you take K times the distance BC, 
this should be which is simply n it should be able to give you l multiplied by the resistance a b which is simply m therefore kn should be equal to l multiplied by m kn should be equal to l multiplied by m that is at balance then we can look at an example so in this example it reads that in an experiment to determine the resistance of a nichrome wire using the meter rule bridge uh, so it is called a meter rule bridge that is the meter bridge because it uses a meter rule so the balance pointer was found to be at 38 centimeter mark so at point b this is the 38 centimeter mark if the value of the resistance in the right hand gap needed to balance the bridge was 25 ohm calculate the resistance of resistor r so if this is the 38 centimeter mark and this is the zero centimeter mark this is the 100 centimeter mark it simply means that we are dealing with a meter rule so the first task is to find uh, a b that is since a c because the whole of this is 100 centimeter it means the distance a b will be 38 minus zero which simply gives you 38 centimeters because b is a, a is balanced at the 38 centimeter mark then the distance bc you just take 100 minus 38 so the distance bc will be 100 minus 38 which gives you 62 centimeters then from here we have said that when the galvanometer pointer is zero or when the system is at balance if you take r resistor r times the distance bc the resistance of wire at between points b and c must be equal to 25 multiplied by the resistance of the resistor wire between points a and b so at balance r times the resistance bc must be equal to 25 times the resistance of a b so r times bc we have already computed bc as 62 centimeters must be equal to 25 times uh, the resistance of a b a b we have already computed it as 38 centimeters so if i make r subject of the formula i'll simply have 25 ohm times 38 centimeters divided by 62 centimeters centimeters and centimeters will cancel out so that i remain with 15.32 ohm thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson but we have the quote to discuss so the quote of the day stated that everything will come to you at the right time you just have to be patient and stay focused so the quote is just encouraging us not to lose hope in life especially when we don't get the results that we've been working for that was that we've been working hard for so the quote is also reminding us that provided we stay consistent with 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 our actions then the outcomes that we've been desiring for will eventually come so don't lose hope keep working hard everything will come to be well and lastly recall that the best things in life are always created from tough situations so do not run away from tough moments instead embrace them and pick the lessons that uh, will help you to build your future thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted in case you are new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you'll always get notified in case you know any student that you honestly think could benefit from this content kindly kindly refer them to kind tuition academy until next time this is kind tuition academy